É importante entender o que o 5G está fazendo e o que eles dizem que está fazendo. Nos foi dito no documento informativo Trípoli 4 que essa tecnologia fritava os seus olhos na Segunda Guerra Mundial. Todos precisam entender que essas são armas militares. São frequências de assalto. Se você não souber nada mais além disso, é isso que você precisa saber. É radiação por micro-ondas, com certeza. Senhoras e senhores, por favor, juntem-se a mim em dar as boas-vindas ao Clube Nacional de Imprensa. O diretor federal da Comissão de Comunicação, o senhor Tom Weller. É um honor estar aqui no Press Club Nacional. A primeira geração wireless 1G foi voz. A segunda geração 2G allowed both talk and text. The third generation, 3G, the internet, in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. E um boato que viralizou nas redes sociais no ano passado serviu de base para um projeto de lei apresentado por deputados de Santa Catarina. Os parlamentares sugerem proibir a tecnologia 5G no Estado, alegando problemas à saúde que nunca foram comprovados. Na justificativa do projeto, o deputado menciona este vídeo que circula pela internet, onde o médico diz que a tecnologia 5G prejudica a saúde e afirma que a morte de pássaros na Holanda foi causada por testes de 5G por lá. Especialistas afirmam que as informações do vídeo não têm fundamento científico. something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Autonomous vehicles, smart city energy grids, transportation networks, and water systems. Hundreds of billions of microchips. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. But this 5G revolution may have a dark side. As it turns out, wireless radiation has biological effects. Published, peer-reviewed science already shows that today's technology creates radio frequencies that pose a threat to both the human body and to animals, not to mention to the environment. These existing health effects of wireless radiation are worthy of attention because in order for 5G to work efficiently, cell towers will need to be installed everywhere. That's why over 200 doctors and scientists worldwide are now cautioning that we need research on the health effects of 5G before its rollout. Let's consider that the brain tumors, infertility, memory loss, nausea, neurological disorders, and anxiety may not even be the worst 5G has to offer. Because with 5G also comes the potential to turn every device into a way for the state to spy on you. Again, don't take it from me. Take it from Mr. James Clapper, former director of national intelligence, who said that in the future, intelligence services might use the Internet of Things for identification, surveillance, monitoring, location tracking, and targeting for recruitment. So why is the federal government allowing for the rollout of 5G and even encouraging it? Well, 
Maybe one of the reasons is that 5G offers security agencies unprecedented access to the data on our lives. There's a lot of confusion about what 5G is. The G stands for generation. So you started off with the first uh, transmitter system. Back in the 1980s. In the 80s, yes. Yeah. So you had 1G, then you had 2G. And as the generations moved on, you started to see uh, more uh, complex uh, signal systems, uh, cleverer uh, pieces of uh, you know antenna designs, etc., etc. So the whole thing became uh, more data, quicker data, quicker downloads, etc., etc. However, 5G is something completely different. There's no doubt now that electric waves, electromagnetic forces cause direct biological effects. There's thousands of peer-reviewed papers on this subject. There's no doubt about it. But what are these effects? How are they affecting us? What can we do about it? We're now at a stage where we're putting in what's called 5G which is a special type of broadcast for high density information transfers. And it turns out that this is the same frequency bands that are used in crowd dispersal weaponry. Five G first and foremost is densification, so it's significantly more transmitters in close proximity to uh, the human, and it is also a sophisticated, illegal, unlawful transmitter. What I mean by that is it is a, a high gain dielectric lens antenna, and what that allows five G transmitters to do is to 3D map its environment in your home. The 868 megahertz frequency is specific for battlefield interrogation systems, so sub gigahertz. It allows the signal to travel through concrete brickwork with ease, and it can actually uh, data gather. It is a target acquiring system. It is extremely good at identifying targets and being able to lock on the targets. And not only that, it can specifically target you as an individual. So any judge sitting on a, uh, an interesting case, let's say, any lawyer, any barrister, anybody doing any work that is potentially controversial, your life could be a threat. So the antenna design that you currently have on top of these LED streetlights masquerading as a control management system it basically battlefield interrogation equipment. The first phase of the rear unit was actually called Mammoth, used by the Germans during the Second World War to identify Allied aircraft. Obviously things have moved on significantly since then. What evidence do we have that the electromagnetic fields that we already are exposed to are harmful given our current levels of exposure? Well, we have about 10,000 papers that have been published and many, many hundreds of reviews that have been published that clearly show that there are massive effects on our bodies based on the exposures we already have. So what, is ex what exactly is going to be changing when 5G rolls out? Is it a simple case of more exposure or is it a t different type of frequency? It's not so much the frequency, although that's important. It's the pulsations that are the critical thing. 5G is designed to carry gigantic amounts of information, as you've already stated. And the way that information is carried is, is by pulsations. We know that the pulsations make these electromagnetic fields much, much more dangerous. And 5G, therefore, is designed to be vastly more dangerous than anything that we've been exposed to to date. 
Situação da campanha Huawei, por exemplo. Olhe para a situação da Huawei e tentativa sem cerimônia de excluí-la do mercado internacional. Isto já é chamado em alguns meios de comunicação de primeira guerra tecnológica da época digital que começa agora. O presidente Xi Jinping afirmou que a China está disposta a compartilhar a tecnologia 5G com todos os sócios. A Huawei está em situação delicada desde que o presidente americano Donald Trump proibiu em maio que as empresas do país vendam material para o grupo chinês. Há dezenas e dezenas de estudos que mostram, sem dúvida, o que essa radiação está fazendo para o nosso sperm. Agora, se você pegar o telefone de sua bolsa, The sperm will recuperate within three to four months. What would not recuperate would be the damage to the DNA of the sperm. That is irreparable. The wife of the ex-governor of, of Indiana was diagnosed with glioblastoma. Same brain tumor Ted Kennedy had and John McCain had. Did you look at John McCain's car? This is a cell phone brain tumor. Um, LeBron James, one of our sports people, had a salivary gland tumor. That is another cell phone uh, uh, tumor. You didn't hear about it because immediately after that was discovered, he would pay, was paid by Samsung to become their spokesperson. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We talk about 24-7, uh, around the clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate. Then the irradiation will definitely damage cells at a deeper level. And the question is, what will then happen? Did you hear about people coming to you as far as, uh, as, far as having complaints about uh, illness? We were made aware of health complaints following installation of smart meters, and we wanted to verify this uh, using our field work. So I measured the field of about 30 different people while they stood one foot in front of the smart meter. And in every single case, the uh, human energy field was obliterated as they stood in front of the smart meter. So in our first slides, what we see is normal cells and the structure of the cells is intact and sound. This is what we would expect from a normal sample. So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter at about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken and you see changes in the cells which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation, and it's known that this occurs due to oxidation or uh, exposure to free radicals. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about an increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called Rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up, which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues as they would be their normal function. Every single one of these is a degradation. Every single one of these shows a trauma to the blood cells and that came from something and the only variable was the smart meter. The good news in all this is the patient and the blood can return to normal once they have been removed from the influences of these stressors. When those first studies were performed years and years ago, nobody knew about the importance of the microbiome, uh, the role of the microbiome and the immune system, and even less the role of the microbiota inside our brains, that is the microbes that are normally resident inside our brains, whose influence on brain function is nothing but immense. And you may think, well, who cares about the microbes? The less microbes we have, the better it is. Well, we, we know by now that this is not absolutely the case because microbes are truly essential for the development and function of all our organs and systems. Our immune system is based on the microbes we have in our gut. And our brain also has microbes that influence its function.
this is going to eviscerate microbial DNA inside human beings, which is our effective operating system, number one. So it may not impact human DNA in laboratory experiments right now, and they're saying it doesn't impact human DNA. But given that human DNA is less than 1% of the cellular DNA in the human body, the rest of the cellular DNA is microbial, and we know that this will eviscerate microbial DNA. So we're talking about a takedown of the operating system of human beings. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. John Brandt. Good morning, Mr. Brandt. Wow, my uh, this is Amanda. From oh, Virginia. hi, how are you? Hi, I've been trying to get a hold of you for months now. You guys are covering up chemtrails. No, we are not covering up. We have, we have no reason to cover up chemtrails. Of course you have every reason to cover it up. Every reason. Let's call what reason your job. would that be? Oh, well, you personally, I'm, uh, you would lose your job if you were to, to reveal anything to me. And it's probably unsafe for you to even be speaking about this, considering no, the a, types <laughs> of individuals you work for. It's, it's not unsafe. There's, it is unsafe. There's no, can... no problem with us talking on, you know, you're a citizen, you're making a complaint. Oh, a complaint Lord, I'm working on myself. It's a complaint in an area that, that we, don't, uh, we don't have authority to regulate. So, the connection between chemtrails and 5G? It's all interconnected. Uh, the metallized particulates, uh, that would allow the 5G phase to race, so basically the radar, it would allow it to be able to identify you, so it can watch you, it can identify you in your own home, 20 hours a day, 7 days a week. For the last X amount of years, we've been through chemtrailing, and that is now the cat is out of the box. We've had these nanoparticulates raining down on humanity for years now impregnating our bodies by best accounts staying inside our bodies those nanoparticulates what you're saying are creating a f building up a kind of a phosphorescence glow capability so that we can be flagged up in our homes behind concrete and steel inside bunkers in the basement doesn't matter where you are the 5G will be able to now triangulate, map and read you because you as a living being are impregnated with these nanoparticulates which are acting as a kind of transmission and reception technology. It's exactly, absolutely exactly.